So I can now go and say a um, more formal formal welcome. So welcome everybody that is joining us today from both Spot Wales and CDPS. Uh, this is in fact the last uh, show and tell of Alpha Plus and uh, thanks for um, joining for the next hour. Um, it will be, I guess, packed uh, with things to share with you. Um, I would say uh, an, an apologies from uh, the team. So unfortunately, it was Lorena's last day yesterday. Uh, she's a content designer within the team. But just to say that um, all the work that we're sharing with you is obviously from all of us. And that includes um, her that is not present. Uh, the other thing to say is just uh, what we're sharing with you is really out of the press. Uh, we just came from a session with the sponsors and a bit more about that uh, in a minute. So in terms of what we're going to talk about, so kind of where we are, and I just kind of gave that away, we are at the end. Uh, what was the focus for Sprint 5, what we really, well, what we've done during Sprint 5 uh, and any team learnings and really what's next. And um, as usual, um, we'll have time for questions at the end. But then again, if you have any question during the the kind of as we go along, if you have any questions, do ask, put your hand up um, and do ask a question or uh, as well, you can use the, the chat functionality if you prefer. So I did mention I did give you away. Today is the 16th of June. I had to look it twice and uh, we, in fact, uh, finished Alpha Plus. And these, uh, you know, that is the roadmap roadmap that we've been sharing from day one. And just to say that we've done everything that we wanted to do. So the focus for us as a team really was wrapping up. And I have to say that the, over the last couple of weeks, which was the time of this this particular sprint, which was shorter than the evaluation or research sprints, I have to say that the team has been working tirelessly to wrap up. Uh, and as I mentioned, we just came from a session with the sponsors. We are actually now doing our last show and tell to share the findings and recommendations with you. And after this, the team is going to have the last retro. So a bit of celebration and kind of uh, taking a breather, I think, after a very busy day. So in terms of uh, a quick overview of Alpha Plus, um, just a quick reminder uh, of the weighted service stages. So this was at the beginning of Alpha, kind of the stages that the team identified as being part of the service. And uh, in Alpha Plus, uh, as you can see, the yellow effectively is kind of uh, what was in effect uh, the scope for Alpha Plus. Um, fortunately, things have gone well in terms of feedback from um from the research and that meant that we were able to do even more than um kind of what we normally promise or what was in uh the promise of scope so better always that way that we promise something potentially a bit smaller and we deliver more so that is great and a reflection of the great work as well that the design team uh has done and the research that was received and on that basis um, they were able to transfer the current learning lear, learning log content uh, for on the on, online um, prototype, and that meant that we just started a conversation with participants about that. Not to say that we've done the same um, in-depth research that we've done with what was within scope, but um, I think we have some more details a bit later. Numbers are always good and this is an overview of Alpha. So we've had the four research sprints uh, during 12 weeks 
and in effect we had um, five user journeys. And so we had uh, eligibility journey, the create account journey, application journey, offer journey, and then the learning that we weren't uh, expecting at the start. Again, we managed to engage and research with 29 participants, which is fantastic because um, eight of those were in fact totally new to Spot Wales. So even though um, one or two, I think the number was quite small, that had heard about Spot Wales, they all have never done an application with Sport Wales. So they came with a total um, fresh pair of eyes. As well, we had support in terms of um, reaching out and effectively um, recruiting participants um, through an agency plus four. So of those eight, seven was were recruited by um, by the agency. I think it's also worthwhile to say that we conducted um, all the, the evaluations and research in English, uh, which I believe you do know. And um, I was going to take something, but I'm not. I'm going to leave James to talk about the great work of everybody present or that participated in research. I think as well it's worthwhile to say that as we've done previously in Discovery and Alpha, we haven't done this work in isolation. So we really engaged uh, with Sport Wales throughout, whether that would be in terms of the privacy and data, the investment team in terms of getting um, regular updates to them, sharing the prototype and getting feedback and as well requesting specific uh, pieces of information and knowledge. Uh, there was as well discussions about uh, VAT. Obviously, there is a, a very close link with um, the procurement process that is currently happening and as well uh, discussions or a discussion specifically with one of the national partner where um, um, where um, we, we um, explore how they could potentially uh, help us with more um, participants and as well obviously with the sponsors throughout uh, in various ways. Conscious about time and passing on to Jack to talk about design. Hi, uh, just thought I'd say hello and I'm going to put my camera off because I'm having a few Wi-Fi issues so apologies for that. OK, so during um, Alpha Plus, we, we kind of created a whole raft of prototypes that covered the uh, the journeys that Maria's just mentioned. In all, we, we've probably had seven prototype, different prototypes, no, eight different prototypes, beg your pardon, across the, uh, the five different journeys. Um, obviously, there are only four rounds of research, um, so we can't be probably testing out uh, a couple of uh, prototypes uh, or parts of journeys um, during e each of those evaluations. Uh, we went through a lot of design iteration. Uh, I think we were obliged about 146 versions of the prototype uh, at the end, um, but only 26 steps. So we kept that journey nice and, and as compact as we, we could. Uh, lots of discussions between myself and Lorena, the content designer. Um, I think we added them, what was about 480 odd um, comments, notes and discussions that we made within the prototype software. And that was lots of hours of other um, design discussions as well. Uh, next slide, please, Maria. So just to overview the, the, the thing that we, we created, the prototype, um, this is kind of what we call the eligibility and application journey. There's probably three distinct parts to this. Um, however, for the user, this was really much more of a seamless journey. So they check their eligibility. And for them, it was just a nice flow through to the end and they submitted it at step 14. We then moved on to the offer journey. Have the next slide. Um, this obviously went through 
sports world's back office so where all the decisions are made and i won't go too much into that i think uh, becca might uh, mention aspects of that later but um they'd be notified and then they would uh, kind of go through this journey to accept the offer that we'd made to them there's various shades of offer so some were completely successful others were partially successful and some had conditions attached to their offer so the the prototype in this area really had to do a number of things and present a number of things to users and get them to do stuff so we very much took a very structured approach to this and, and really guided them through it the last part that you can see there is the learning log. We didn't do much in this area. It was just more a baselining effort to get this um, the document that was offline version uh, into the digital space and, and just see um, how people got on with that, uh, just to set up any future work around that. Next slide, please. So just to say, um, we did have some kind of guiding principles as we were going through this. Um, and the first one you can see there is probably really important was we were designing in the context and considering the, the whole user journey and how people kind of related to this and how that fitted into their world. Um, so we were very, very mindful of that. Um, also pulling out one there at the bottom is we were very conscious to design for everyone uh, so really kind of thinking about those with lower digital skills and and one of the things that we have did to avoid complications was we tried to minimize the burden on them to upload anything at all because um, you know some people do find that a, a difficult task uh, but we were helped a lot um, in our work by using established design patterns. And we took a lot from government digital service in that respect, respect, but adapted those patterns for our particular users. So next slide, please. Um, and just quickly, you know, did this, I'm, I'm sure some of you have seen this before, but, you know, we were kind of iterating the designs across the four rounds. And you can see there, the way that in version one on the left, um, it's a much different design to version four on the right hand side there and that, that was all due to evaluations and getting feedback from users and improving the way that we kind of tackled the flow and everything and if we go to the final slide for the design I think really um, you know it's, it's flow interactions and layouts and given the absence of Lorena today I really wanted to call out the the massive amount of work Lorena's done to actually evolve and change the content across the prototypes that we've done you know there really has been a lot of thought gone into the content that you see within the prototype um, and particularly this screen is, is, is a good example uh, what might not be obvious uh, in this, and you know, we struggled to get this right. And it's probably one of the last things that we included in one of those very final lights, is to ensure that the language that is used is quite inclusive. Uh, this is a subtle, but it's an important thing. I mean, we started asking people what steps they had taken to include those who are underrepresented, or how they included diverse groups. But we thought that this um, implicitly, uh, sorry, sorry, and we thought that this really within that, it was implicit that they weren't part of those diverse or underrepresented groups. Um, so that they weren't the reader, you know, that we're talking about somebody other than themselves. Um, so we didn't feel that was particularly inclusive. So in version four, we kind of, modified the language subtly um, and asked if your organisation currently reflects diverse groups. Thus, the question assumes that the reader themselves is part of those diverse groups. Um, in some respects, this is a really minor change in the language, but I think it's really made an important shift of emphasis to be more inclusive. Um, I think I'm handing over to James now to talk about the um, the evaluations and what we learned in the research. 
Cheers, Jack. Thank you. So, hello, everyone. I'm James, uh, the researcher that's been on this project. I say the researcher loosely. It's been an incredible team effort. Um, I've also been working with Owain and Amy from Sport Wales, who are, you know, experts themselves within research and service design. And we've just worked as a complete team across this piece. And, and it really has shown and, and been extremely valuable because of that, um, in terms of actually planning, conducting, doing analysis together. Um, so yeah, it's been a, it's been a brilliant team effort, not to mention everyone else taking notes and, and observing the sessions as well. Um, so uh, again, if anybody does want to get into further depth from what we're going to go through now, this is, this is iceberg stuff, really. Um, there is a findings library and lots more evidence and things like that, that, uh, that will be given to sport Wales following this. Um, and then the following subjects that we're going to talk about, were actually above and beyond a little bit of the usability of the actual product itself so that from away from the screens all albeit the subjects are within the screens but they're not necessarily what we're talking about like Jack was talking about the changes that were happening on the screen would be in a design recommendation document uh, so to speak um, so next one please um, so yeah essentially the usability of this new end-to-end -end process was really really good by the end it was good quite early on actually which allowed us to do a little bit more service design level research at the same time uh, but users by the end got through the process 100 percent of the time uh, there were little things where they would have discussions about um, certain questions or we would get a little deeper into it because of the research goals we had but it's believed that they would get through that if we weren't there um, the chosen design patterns performed extremely well, um, and that was also across desktop, tablet, and mobile phone. We were lucky enough to to meet users that use use different technology from each other, um, which was great to see. Um, the expectations of the order of the steps uh, was met, so not just did they get into it and think, "Okay, this is great. This is going in the direction that I want it to be." It was it was like that they came into the journey expecting things to happen in a particular way, and it, and it and it fed it to them in that in that manner. They were also confident they were in control of the process, which was an important part of this because being able to save and continue and it, and it being something that you're in control of when it was a quite a large piece of work for somebody to do, filling out big questions and going away and talking to people within your organization to get help with the feedback part of it. It, it was great to see that they were confident by having control uh, and being able to save and come back to it later if they need to. And then uh, also they were just very positive about he, how, I, how easy it was to use. Um, we obviously asked people towards the end, how did you, you know, what did you make of that? How did you feel about it? And it was quite across the board that people were like, that, that was very easy to do and a lot easier than it was expected. And as I said, further design considerations um, would be within the design document as well that was going to get handed to uh, Sport Wales. Uh, next one, please. So this slide is um, essentially carried over from Alpha. So this, I'm not going to take credit for this. This came, this was made in Alpha. So these personas, so to speak, uh, obviously not individuals, it's clusters of observed behaviors uh, and attitudes. Um, they sustained into Alpha Plus, maybe very slight nuanced changes, but they did sustain. Um, so we did meet these people again throughout Alpha Plus. Um, but what got added to that is just a few uh, smaller things that are not, not necessarily worth calling out here. But what we did have is a lot of experienced people in terms of we've done applications before, we've done funding applications before. Um, so they really knew what to expect. And then we've had people who have never applied for any funding at all, ever, and didn't know what to expect. Um, like I said, people on iPads, mobile phones, desktops, uh, returning users to Sport Wales, so they're not just experienced elsewhere, uh, completely new users to Sport Wales, so they've never, never, not necessarily even heard of Sport Wales yet, um, large organisations, small organisations and non-traditional organisations as well, so we've talked to quite a breadth of users in the research in Alpha Plus. Um, next one, please. So this one is um, related to, we, we, like I said, we broke down some subjects essentially that were outside of the design findings. And one of the big, big ones that came out was around the term projects that Sport Wales use for users to try and explain what it is they need to, what, they, what it is they want to do for them to get the funding. Um, but yeah, across all rounds of this research, there were quite a few um, 
misinterpretations of what project means. You can see in the list there, for example, one of the big ones was people believing that their, the project was their whole club. So it wasn't just a little thing that they were going to do. It was their whole club. And, and the, some of the problems that can happen with these misinterpretations is that it can uh, have him impact on um, potential journey abandonment, for example, because we had uh, a couple of users that because they thought their project was their whole club, that means that their club has already started. And one of the questions was, has your project started? And they would answer yes, and it would make them ineligible, um, which we don't want to happen. Um, other things could be that there's unnecessarily unnecessary adaptations to their application and unnecessary contact with Sport Wales if they get completely stuck, for example. Um, next one, Maria. You were there already before me. Read my mind. <laughs> uh, and then just this is just one quote. We're going to do one quote after each one of these slides. There are more quotes to this um, and lots more evidence, obviously, that backs all of this up. Um, but yeah, I've seen this question before. So this was a returning user, but found it confusing. We haven't replaced it, the mower, as they were talking about, for cutting the grass, but we have estimates. So at what point does the project start? It's just a great demonstration of not quite knowing what Sport Wales' version of project means and what their own version of project means and how, how are they dovetailing, if at all. Um, next one, please. I think this is over to Owain now for this one. It's me for this one. Oh, sorry, um, Amy. Thanks, James. So, yeah, this is about the question to do with our um are you affiliated to a national governing body and would you have a conversation with them so basically the research kind of presented that there were lots of views on ngbs and they weren't consistent like they weren't consistent between sports necessarily either and also there wasn't a consistent understanding of why you would have to speak to an ngb so a good example is that certain organizations just didn't uh, certain clubs sorry didn't have affiliations to their ngb or they wouldn't think it was appropriate for a small grant application to contact their NGB. Um, some they would find useful to talk to them, some they wouldn't. It was also really interesting to see where we then put information saying, oh, you could contact your NGB for, and then it was several bullet points of different recommendations of what they could help with. Some um, users did find that really useful and didn't know that that was available and that they could contact their NGB for things like that. Others misunderstood what was um, required from yeah us asking would you contact your ngb so i think we kind of it didn't ever um stop a user from applying they continued their journey it didn't it wasn't any hard stop um in any way but it did kind of spark conversation about ngbs perceptions of ngbs and the use um of ngbs to the, all of the clubs for the for the users so if we just again it's just one quote um but one user said if i was looking for funding for a racetrack and it was significant capital funding then yeah they'd need ngb support but when they're talking small scale grants they wouldn't think there's a need so that just kind of shows what the user perceived the purpose of an ngb to be and how to communicate with them and as as james already said there's a abundance of quotes of different perceptions of what an ngb um could do to help each organization so over to Owen. Okay, me. <clears throat> so yeah, this one relates to um, a question that's asked in the application about whether the user or applicant has spoken to the local authority about the project they're seeking funding for. Um, a little bit like the NGB situation actually there's a bit of a split here. Um, in terms of some participants would do it as sort of standard practice and others didn't really, didn't really know why they were, we were asking that question and sort of question the reason for it. So there's a bit of a bit of a difference really. And, some said it was just a standard thing they do um, if, if they were doing any project or looking for funding, they would speak to David Jones at the sports development team because that's what they tend to do to gain advice. Others were a bit more sort of negative or reluctant to speak to the local authority and a lot of that was sort of down to their experience from before that they've perhaps tried to get in touch with them and have struggled or they've been passed around at the local authority and not got anywhere with it and not uh, found it a fruitful conversation so they didn't see the need for it. Others sort of saw it as a financial thing. They thought, well, no, there's not really any money at the local authority, so why would I bother? Um, and didn't see the need to sort of contact the local authority around it. So, yeah, a bit of a mixed bag and a lot of it is sort of dependent on the relationship they've already got with, with the local authority. Are they already familiar with who the correct contacts are um, or even word of mouth, perhaps? And they may have heard bad things around that local authority and they don't, don't get in touch with the sports development team. So not a showstopper. It wasn't a major issue, but 
it just caused a bit of uh, confusion or frustration for some who were asked to do it, um, whereas others just, just did it as standard practice over their um, projects and funding applications day to day. Um, so I think that's for some reason another quote to follow. Um, so one person said, it's not too helpful. I don't even know if we have a sports department in the local authority. I don't think I would be contacting them. I go frequently to find out what's available grants wise in the area. I just find the council not good in that respect. But as was just a caveat, this was this was one person that said that there were others similar. But there were others on the opposite end of the scale that sort of sung the praises of the local authority uh, teams and the contact points they have. So very much a split, but um, I think there's a piece of work to look at. Um, yeah, they're all the partners and we'll come on to that later on. Cheers, Maria. OK, so um, the next one is around structure and participants. So this was a question that was asking about structure and participants that had uh, a number of bullet points against it. I think we saw it earlier that when Jack went through some of the iterative content design uh, process. Um, so by this point, the, the question did have bullet points and the overwhelming behavior here is that people want to use those bullet points. Uh, they were deemed helpful as questions or uh, prompts, so to speak, to help them remember things sometimes. Um, although it did create a little bit of concern about making sure that they had ticked all the boxes so that when they came to this question, OK, how can I make sure I answer everything against those bullet points? They felt like it was a set of requirements, so to speak. Um, and then there's a great quote about prejudice in the, the grant if I don't get it right. So although Yes, they were helpful. There seemed to be a pressure on people to just get this right, otherwise they would fail the application, and that's not technically the case. Um, and then the other part actually is relative to what Jack said earlier around the diversity question or divers, diversity bullet points in this. The one that you can see in bold is the updated one for this round, but prior to that, um, there was um, confusion about, okay, what do I need to put here? If I'm already open to being diverse anyway and passively open to it i can't i don't know what to say to make sure that you believe that i'm being active about it or taking steps to do this because i'm not technically taking steps to do this it's just the way that our club is um which is totally fine but it was, it was putting pressure on particular people to actually believe that if they didn't do that they wouldn't get it right again and that, i think that's the biggest problem here is that people believe that they had to get this bit right when it wasn't actually a requirement to get right to be able to have a decision made. Um, and then the next quote, Maria, if you get to that one, uh, the way I've read it is that I have to answer against all the bullet points. You tend to want to tick all the boxes in these things so I don't miss anything and prejudice the grant, which is the one I referenced earlier. So, and then over to Amy for the next one. Yeah, so this slide's about the justification section. So that was the question of why do you need funding um, for your project? And there was sort of two main versions. There were obviously tweets along the way, but two kind of principal versions we did of this question. One where we didn't give much guidance um, alongside the question. So it was just why do you need funding? And then later on in the evaluations, we kind of added bullet points related to Sport Wales's goals to kind of give a bit of guidance to the user. Um, and it was other points like, oh, what would happen if you didn't get the funding, etc. So it just gave some examples of what the content could be. Um, and again, like very similarly to the previous question, it was clear that the users just held different understandings of what was required of them for this section and that there was a kind of feeling of pressure to get it right. But the idea of what was right was just very, very different. And I think the two personas that were um, touched upon earlier were kind of very striking for this question of certain users just had kind of a copied and pasted answer, that some reference that they would just go back to other applications they'd done for different funding pots and copy and paste the answer over for why they need funding. Whereas others kind of didn't really know what they would say. And then others felt a lot of pressure, said that they would go read all of Sport Wales's goals, go back and consult with their clubs, um, edit their response and really make sure to hit those points. Um, I think it's also worth noting that when we did add the bullet points examples of what the content could be, um, it was very widely used as a guide. So users either would write their answer and then go back to the bullet points or they would see the bullet points as questions to answer. And that's kind of, even though they, they weren't questions, they were statements, but users would reference to them as saying, oh, I would answer these questions. Um, we also touched upon in this section as well, uh, kind of, and again, it's, it was just us asking questions, so it can't be kind of really firm conclusions, but we touched upon whether 
um, answering this question with different means would be more useful. So like a voice version, a video, um, adding photos, et cetera, would, would be more helpful for the users. And they did appear to speak about their projects with more ease and fluency. And the content that they spoke was different to what they wrote. So it was especially kind of obvious when going back and rewatching the videos that what they said was different to what they were writing down. Now, obviously, it's, it's hard to tell what would happen in a real situation, but that that was quite clearly um, presented through. And as I've also got a point there, it should also just be noted that a lot of users, as I already said, said that they would go back and edit and check this section and consult with others. So it, it was seen as an important um, section to them and that the impact of whether they would get the funding, they felt that they needed to get this part right uh, to do it. So we've got kind of yeah one quote on the next slide as well of this was just an example of one user who said, I'll shorten it down because I'll rattle on. So they'd spoken very passionately and clearly about why the funding would make a difference for their organisation. But then when kind of seeing the bullet points or seeing the text box in the question, kind of just wanted to shorten down their answer and just then gave like kind of very yeah, short direct answers to the bullet point prompts after speaking a lot about what they would use the funding for. So it was just, yeah, we'll go through in the recommendations later a bit more about this section and what we recommend for coming from it. So I think pass over to Owain. Yep. Um, so as you may or may not know, um, after <laughs> after they receive funding and go through the sort of project phase, they are required to sort of uh, complete a learning log. Um, I think it was mentioned at the start as well. This was something that wasn't initially within the scope of the of the project and the research that we did. But um, because of the time that we had and the sort of last evaluation um, week, we were able to start to speak to some of the um, new users around this learning log and just to get some of their um, perspectives and thoughts on it when they when they went through the learning log questions on the end of um, an application process. Um, and so yeah, we didn't go into too much detail, but we managed to get some early sort of findings from the, the handful of new users we've spoken to around this. Um, so some of the things we found is a little bit of confusion about the title, learning log. Um, their their sort of initial reaction was, oh, is that a daily capture of information? Do we need to be logging numbers and you know things around the club every day? Um, but then when they actually got to the learning log itself, they saw it was quite different to that and more of a sort of um, answering questions in a shorter um, style. But um, yeah, the initial sort of reaction to that was a bit different to what it actually was. Um, there were some people who had a bit of sort of nervousness and concern when they got to it because they thought, well, how open should we be here if we, we haven't spent all the money or we've spent it differently to what we actually said we'd apply, um, the money we'd applied for? Um, will Sport Wales come after us and sort of want some of the money back? So there were some early questions around how honest they would want to be in, in a real scenario if they'd actually gone through the project and and how open they should be and transparent to Sport Wales just because of that nervousness about um, the financial situation and whether we'd question it, I suppose. Um, there's a section in the learning log around sustainability. So there's a question with the heading, sorry, of sustainability, but no real context. So a few, few people we spoke to were a bit confused around what Sport Wales actually wanted from that. Was it financial sustainability questions or were they environmental sustainability or, or another type? So um, easy, easily to be fixed, easy fix, sorry, but um, there's a bit of confusion actually around what we were trying to get out of that sort of part of the learning log um, that we went through. Uh, but as I said, we didn't go into too much uh, research and depth on on this, but it's some early findings that we can go on and do more work on uh, going forward. So that's the summary there. Next slide, please, Maria. Um, so quick, quick for you again. Um, so this is a user who'd actually done other applications, but not a Sport Wales one. Um, so was half familiar with the concept of providing learning and reporting on a project. Um, so it always makes me feel nervous about doing it, and I had to evidence I'd spent it wisely. And sometimes you might not spend the money on the exact things you predicted you've spent it on. So my fear is that they'll come back, um, come after us in terms of the money. And that's where I just explained uh, there in terms of the nervousness. So thanks, Maria. Um, and then we'll just go on to the, the, what we've done there, just gone through some of the key findings from the um, the application journey um, and, and some of the key questions that were asked and some of the things we, we got from those and the different perspectives. So we've got a few additional learnings that we've sort of found out outside of the main application journey that we'll go through in just a couple of slides uh, here now. So next one, please, Maria. Um, so I think on the back of a few evaluation sessions that Amy just touched on it now around the um, video application or other ways that users might be able to sort of convey what they're trying to put into a written application. 
Um, and we were aware there'd been some um, insight from Street Games. I think Annabelle had shared it internally with us, a few of us, around sort of a trial um, they'd done on a recent funding round where applicants could use um, video or other or even conversations around their applications to help sort of complement the written ones or, or as an alternative. So we set up a meeting with Street Games to try and learn from some of their um, experience and what they've sort of found from that initial um, trial uh, sort of funding round they'd done in this new way. I suppose a bit of a caveat is it was a much smaller cohort of people um, and a different type of funding round, but ultimately it was good sort of learning for us around how that had gone for them. Um, and, and they'd introduced this video option because they'd had focus groups and people had sort of suggested they'd like some different ways of applying and it was a good way of removing some of the barriers to applying. Um, and within that, there was 15 to 20 percent of the applicants um, who submitted video applications in that pilot round. Um, and there's good feedback around sort of um, the method feeling more human to, human to the uh, to the applicants and making them feel more part of, of the output and less transactional. Um, and we should have had some questions to them uh, to street games around sort of the resource requirement of assessing video applications if they were having numerous ones with different sort of um, sizes. And I, I suppose they'd, they'd put limits on these videos um, and it hadn't affected their sort of resource and um, the amount of time they need to spend in assessing those videos, luckily. That said, it was as much small, smaller cohort and perhaps different to the, to the Active Wales Fund audience. Um, what else was there? They'd also had sort of conversational options. So they could, people who were applying for this fund with Street Games could just book in a 15 minute slot um, to talk to Street Games around their idea uh, and use that as another way of trying to see what was possible um, and discuss applications that way rather than just the written um, option. So it was a good good sort of learning meeting we had there. Um, that's just one example. I'm sure we could speak to other other people out there with these different um, methods of applying and, and go from there. But that's just one that we managed to fit into the Alpha Plus phase. So on to Becca, I think, next. Thanks, Owen. Um, a further finding that we had that wasn't specifically related to the um, individual evaluations that we were doing was just the general discussions that I was having with the investments team throughout uh, Alpha Plus and one of the things that came up um, in recent weeks was about this idea of a, an ideal application that had been received um, in by the um, investments team as a real application and how it was written and the I suppose difference of that application to what we were seeing in these evaluations, especially with new users who maybe weren't comfortable with um, Sport Wales or didn't know much about us. And so this slide just tries to break down to show that difference between maybe what Sport Wales expectation is and um, what is actually happening in the real world, including what's happening on our current application system. Um, you know, because it's not that often that these ideal applications come around in the real system either. Um, so. This kind of just gave us an opportunity to really look at that sort of um, difference in between Sport Wales expectation and the real world and made us think a bit more in terms of, well, what can we do in order to get people to the point of Sport Wales recommendation or expectation um, with their applications? Which kind of like leads us on to our recommendations from Alpha Plus. Um, so I'm going to go through the um, Alpha Plus recommendations. If we can go to the next slide, please. Maria. In terms of an overview of our recommendations, Alpha Plus was built on work con conducted throughout Discovery and Alpha and now Alpha Plus, so they, they aren't in um, silo from the other work that we've done. Um, the overall intent was obviously to increase the reach and impact of our community investment and we've taken into consideration a couple of other pieces of work that are ongoing as a result of the Discovery and Alpha work which was a procurement of a new grant system and also this piece of work that Owen Hathaway is going to be leading on in exploring the role of Sport Wales partners playing community investment and that sort of support element that applicants are looking for um, before an application comes to us. So in terms of the recommendations there are seven recommendations and I'm just going to go through them with you with a little bit more detail, but it's based on the time that we've got in the show and tell. I can't go into as much depth as obviously we would have with the partners, uh, with the partners with the sponsors, sorry. Um, but if people do have questions, feel free to come back to me after the session and we can 
have further discussions. So in terms of the first uh, recommendation, it's to implement the agreed approach to Welsh language. As Maria touched upon at the beginning, all of our evaluations to date and the prototype has been in English due to uh, the, just the feasibility of being able to do a bilingual system and the timescales that we've had for this project, it just wouldn't be possible. Uh, we appreciate the fact that a like for like translation from English is not possible. Um, you know, the context and all the work that's gone into the content of the English version could potentially be lost if we were just to do a like for like translation. Um, so Sport Wales sponsors are already in communications with um, for, uh, in communication with the Welsh Language Commissioner to discuss how we can tackle this. But what we're recommending is that we uh, Sport Wales engage as a content designer with experience in both English and Welsh content design so that the applicant's experience is consistent regardless of which language they choose to choose to apply in. The um, second uh, recommendation is to apply the prototype design and recommendations. So as Jack spoke earlier, there was a lot of detail and work that's gone into this prototype, lots of um, reasons why we've come to the end version that we have and um, a document has been pulled together uh, called the design guidance and recommendations document which we suggest sport wales uses when implementing this into a real system and um, to look at that document as we go through when it comes to going to live and that follow proposed pathway to live this is our third recommendation um, we've been looking at the best way that how do we now get this prototype onto something that people can actually use in the real world and get some real learnings from it as opposed to just in an evaluation um, what we're recommending to sport wales is that they consider a private beta and maria please jump in if i say anything incorrect when it comes to private betas um, whereby Sport Wales implements the prototype and any design and content recommendations from Alpha Plus within the new system um, that we are going to procure, that we test that new system in English and Welsh internally and with the chosen supplier prior to open it up to applicants. And it will be a limited number of people to use that service to give us feedback initially would be within a private beta. So then a few other considerations to bear in mind when doing this is obviously any composition of the team that is used to um, procure the system and actually develop the new system for us. And also that during the private beta, we make sure that anyone that's got connections with the system, be it applicants, third parties, our partners who support them, know of any changes, whether related to the system itself or to policy. Um, in terms of policy, consider policy changes is our fourth recommendation and it was mainly in discovery that we spoke about a minimum requirements almost of information that's needed from applicants to evidence um, their needs as part of an application process and during Alpha Plus the team has investigated hard and soft policies and by that I mean a hard policy being sort of uh, anything that would be subject not to change would be hard so you know the fact that applicants have to be not-for-profit organizations that's not something that we can be flexible on but soft policies are those things that we could maybe have a little bit more flexibility with what we're recommending is that sport wales amends the current eligibility criteria to be in line with what we've proposed as part of the prototype so we have changed the eligibility checklist a fair bit but also explore some suggestions that came through in discovery about payment profiling and financial reconciliations a couple of things that were suggested on that was that we'd increase the threshold for 100% upfront payments, which is currently £10,000, but we could potentially look into making that a larger amount and also change the threshold when it comes to who has to give us a financial reconciliation. Um, at the minute, it's for every grant that's over £10,000, but a proposal is that it's a spot check sample basis on a sliding scale, depending on the value of the reward. So you know, the bigger the award, the more of them that we would want them to do a reconciliation. The fifth recommend recommendation is continue to explore service improvement. So although service design was outside of the scope of Alpha Plus, uh, based on the observations from research and the potential service offering of the investments team and other parts of the organisation, we've recommended that Sport Wales explores the support that's offered to applicants before an application is made. We constantly heard throughout Discovery Alpha and Alpha Plus that they just want 
a little bit more upfront support to actually help them build up a project, you know, before they even put pen to paper on an application form, they want that level of support. Um, this is something that Owen Hathaway will be looking at in terms of the role of our partners in this, because, you know, the support function, should it come from them, should it come from other bodies, especially if applicants don't feel that governing bodies or LAs are who they'd want to go to for support. So we need to explore well, who is it that they could. And obviously Sport Wales ourselves have become more um, involved in the support element of our applicants with the way that we've changed the um, decision making process and whether there's an impl implication of having any sort of further support being offered by Sport Wales um, when it comes to you know the segregation of Sport Wales function supporting applicants as to decision making functions as well. Something else that we've suggested that Sport Wales may wish to explore is an expression of interest. Um, it was outside of the scope of Alpha Plus to kind of make any sort of online version of it, but it's something we used to have with our older grants, development grants, and it worked really well back then. Um, so it's maybe something we can consider going forward with again to help that speculative inquiries from people before they even start to fill an application form in, which could potentially just be ineligible. We can uh, stop them quite early on, then offer some more support or point them in the direction of some other support as well. Number six is to consider further evaluation logs, um, evaluation of the learner logs. Um, and, oh, sorry, just to go back on the um, continue explore service improvement, a couple of things that we've also suggested are just deeper research into some certain areas. So all the things that come through about projects um, and people's understanding of what we mean of projects, um, that uh, idea of potentially getting them to apply in a different way through videos or conversations. You know, we could do some more research into that and consider the learnings from street games, but also from Crowdfunder. Um, now that we've got a bit more information from Crowdfunder with, where they submit videos as part of that funding, um, so there's an option to also continue further research in some certain areas just to really help explore that service improvement level of things. Now to uh, the learning logs and recommendation six. Um, so as suggested, you know, there was a piece of work that was done. Um, it was a review of the Be Active Wales Fund uh, in 20, 2021, 2022, uh, and it was a quantitative and qualitative summary, but it didn't go into too much detail on the learning logs uh, in terms of how effective it is, what works well, et cetera. So we would re um, recommend that Sport Wales reviews that previous research, but also includes do additional research into that, you know, people's expectations of what a learning log should be, their understanding of the questions such as sustainability, what have you. Finally, uh, number seven is to take a new approach to assessing applications on the Be Active Wales Fund priorities. So these are tackling uh, inequality, innovation and sustainability. Uh, from that slide that I showed you earlier, where we had that breakdown of, you know, what is a Sport Wales ideal application form to what is actually happening. Um, one of the big areas is that justification piece, the why they need stuff, but also how they then marry that to our key priority areas. It's something that we've experimented with different ways with that justification question. We've had it say absolutely nothing and just open it to what do you want? Uh, and then we've had all the different iterations of bullet points trying to help them. And where we've kind of come to is that it's still incredibly hard for applicants to answer it in the way that Sport Wales expects them to. But we recognise that Sport Wales needs this information. We need it to assess our applications, but also to report on those key priorities. So what we conclude is it's not feasible necessarily to ask the applicants to be the ones to justify that in terms of the level of detail that we want. So we've kind of, we had a few different variations of what we'd recommend on this point, and we thought that we'd go for the slightly higher risk version of it, which would be that we recommend that Sport Wales removes those three key priorities from the application form and we ask a far more open question on the reason for funding and then it's for Sport Wales investments team to assess against the priorities and Sport Wales can report on it then thereafter. So it's not so much having that barrier for applicants to think, oh, how do I answer this question? And what we're saying is, you know, if we build in some other ways of working, how they can explain to us through videos or other things, it will also then should help Sport Wales be able to get that information a lot easier as well, so that we can say that they're meeting the three different priorities. 
Um, we appreciate that that is the higher risk version, but ultimately we think it might be um, the best way to try and get past this barrier of applicants, no matter what way that we seem to couch this question, that they struggle to get that information across to us. So those are the recommendations. Like I said, there's a lot more detail behind just the screen that says the seven recommendations. So if people have any further questions, feel free to get in contact. And I'm trying to find the rest of my slides because I was looking at something else. I was looking at the previous slides to get all the detail. So bear with me two seconds. Nope, I've completely lost my slides. I'll just go through. Is it even me? Uh, yeah, Becca. <laughs> yeah, we um, moving on to some reflections we have. Uh, happy to help, but I'll put the uh, yeah, slide that's up. Fine. That's fine. Um, so in terms of uh, actual impact of alpha recommendations, so this was the recommendations that we made before we've done this 14 pieces of work. Um, there's actually some real life examples of things that we've already done that well, Sport Wales has already done that has proved beneficial to both Sport Wales and to applicants. Um, that first one being that change to the assessment process by now having panels by exception, it speeds up the panel decision make, making process, increases the autonomy of individual team members. Um, we also have a more personalised applicant's interaction by having those conversations, you know, taking away those panels, you're able, the team's able to have one-on-one -on -one assessments and which means fewer rejections, better relationship with applicants and with partners. Um, also the design assumptions that have been tested through the prototype through Alpha and Alpha Plus have helped develop the recruit, uh, requirements of the new system. They are pretty much 85% of the requirements for the new system we're going to procure is based on what we've done in the last um, however long. And just to say that obviously the procurement process for a new system is running concurrently to Alpha Plus and will still continue after Alpha Plus finishes. Uh, other benefits that we wanted to say was the relationship that we've had with CDPS and uh, Sport Wales partnering together. It was always a clear intent at the beginning of this partnership that, you know, we'd get a better understanding of the original problem statement of how can Sport Wales re increase the reach and impact of this community investment. We always wanted to try and test the more user centred application process, which I think we've definitely done. And another great thing was to support the knowledge sharing and upskilling in Sport Wales in Agile and um, digital beyond the core team. So not just the people who've been involved. We've tried as much as possible to distill that information and knowledge across the organisation. An added bonus, which we wasn't an intention, was we've uncovered a lot of other areas of work that Sport Wales can consider in the future such as you know the role of partners when it comes to our community investment and that type of thing. So in terms of team learnings, it's still me, I'm still going. <laughs> These are the team learnings that we've had um, in this last two week sprint. Uh, the first one being, you have to remind me, Ramir. <laughs> oh, there are users everywhere. Uh, so in relation to this, what we wanted uh, to draw attention to is that this isn't just about applicants this is about sport wales as being users ourselves and um, the key message here was that the last uh, sprint has been about wrapping up and creating this report and that report has been for sport wales so we wanted to make sure that it's the report was conveying the right type of message in the right type of way based on who was going to receive it so you know the needs of users of sport wales were also just as important as the user needs of applicants i'm going to hand over to oi now there you go have a breather yeah, so um, this one is sort of in relation to the like the main purpose of this project, which ultimately was to look at maximising the reach and impact of the Sport Wales community investment. Um, and so to do that, we needed to hold research with all types of people from different sort of communities, different groups of sport groups, different clubs, uh, different levels of digital skills. Um, and it's been sort of quite hard to make sure we, we do that, and that includes old users, current users, and new users or potential new users of the system. Um, so we got to the point where we needed to help, um, help for that. We recruited an agency, as I was mentioned earlier on, actually, to um, to find people who've never actually applied for Sport Wales funding before, but who would actually be eligible. Um, 
and even with an agency working on that sort of day to day for a couple of weeks, it was still a bit of a struggle to get the right people um, in the room with us to conduct the research. So it, it's not been easy, but we've had to do it. And and with that agency work, it was still quite hard to find eight or nine relevant people um, to attend our sessions. But um, that's why we've got their reach is hard. Um, but we have to sort of work to make sure we do speak to all the right people so we can actually try to, to maximise that reach in the end. Thank you. It's back to me for the last one. Um, so quality over quantity. This is just to say that um, one of the sessions that we we held um, in Alpha Plus was a version of a drop in session, which is what we held during Alpha. We had multiple drop in sessions, but this was in the style of something called a lean coffee session. And just to say that despite only having one person attend the session, it was still really useful for members of the team and colleagues alike to learn how to conduct a new style of meeting. I didn't know anything about uh, lean coffee before we started talking about it. Um, and it was also an opportunity uh, for uh, members of the team to learn some new functionality in terms of webinar on Teams, which was something that I didn't know how to do either. So <laughs> that's a benefit as well. And it's over to Brewery now to finish off what's next. Thank you. So you've seen Becca in full product management uh, or embracing product management uh, fully uh, going through the recommendations there, which is great. So in terms of what's next, um, so as it is or as it stands, as me uh, Becca mentioned slightly in terms of the partnership between CDPS and Sport Wales, uh, it is going to finish um, in the way that it has been carried out uh, in terms of having a multidisciplinary team made up of Sport Wales and um, CDPS. So there is a workshop on the 27th of June for both organisations to both celebrate the achievements and the things that um, we achieve together, but as well to discuss what type of relationship uh, CDPS and Spot Wales would like to have going forward and basically creating it together. Um, and as well, Orth, while saying that there's already some training schedule for the 4th and the 5th of July on Agile fundamentals for Sport Wales uh, team members uh, who are going to be part of two projects. And one of them Becca already mentioned, which is the project uh, on the roles um, or the role of the uh, partners and the re that relationship with Sport Wales. And there, there's also another project which I'm less aware of the name in itself. Uh, worthwhile saying then again that both will be or this particular training as well is going to be supported by the skills and capability team within CDPS. Last but not the least, there was a lot of things uh, that we've created and gathered uh, the data to, pr to throughout Discovery Alpha and Alpha P Plus for us to get to uh, kind of the findings. And so there is a lot of documents that will need to be transferred to Spot Wells to make sure that you have all uh, the information uh, at your fingertips to kind of uh, go back and see uh, if you need to in the future. So I know that we um, have imparted with a lot, I did say was jam packed uh, with a lot of information. Uh, but just wondering uh, if anyone have right now any questions or uh, any comments they would like to share. We have a hand up. Yes, Vicky or Vic. <laughs> Hi, Maria. <laughs> I don't know why I call you Vicky, but Vic, Vic please. Vicky's a long time, it's fine. <laughs> Uh, I actually have to adapt to another meeting, but I did have a question. Um, uh, first of all, um, I just want to say it's fabulous to see the hard work that you've been doing and also how you've been working um, together as one team, which leads me into my question. Um, what have been the enablers that for you to be able to work as one team? How long do you have? <laughs> uh, maybe we might need to follow up on this, but I don't know, maybe just the highlights. <laughs> um, I mean, I can jump in here with um, yeah. one thing from me. I've been on the project since the beginning and I was actually given the opportunity to do this full time. So Sport Wales saw the benefits um, of this project and the need for that level of resource to go into it. So that was the enabler for me to actually have been have that very unlikely situation where they were able to 
give me the time and space to explore this and it's been nearly a year of that so without that I don't think it would have been possible for me to have given it the same level of attention as it needs as well if I didn't have that definitely. I think Becca summarised the only thing I would add then is the support of the sponsors from day one then again without their support uh, and acknowledgement that this one is something they they wanted to do and to give uh, the time to their team I don't think uh, we would be where we are right now. Just so another is... one for me as well to say the support of the investments team for me as well in order to help with all the questions that I had when it came to the very specifics of our funding and things even though I was the one doing it they're the ones with the knowledge so the fact that they would always drop stuff to answer me and come into sessions and things like that that's been invaluable as well so a shout out to my team. And maybe just to finish off the fact that I think I mentioned before, this wasn't done in isolation. So there was always engagement throughout and um, being aware that there are things that Sport Wales uh, are doing as well and the impact. Um, so, for instance, the system might be one, but for instance, other projects that might be happening. I don't know if anybody else wants to chip in from the team, but yeah. I think those are probably the building blocks, Vic. Um, you're welcome. Good question, though. I can see that we've got a question in the chat from Paul about how was sponsor feedback. Was that in relation to the session we had this morning, Paul? Oh, yeah, just wondered how it went down, and particularly with um, uh, the recommendations, uh, if they uh, were uh, going to take them on board or they um going to go away and read the report and have a think about it, what uh, how was the feedback and what happens next? I think first to say the feedback that we had from the sponsors was exceptional. They were really happy with the um, what was being presented to them. Obviously, it was a lot of information for them to digest there and then. So I'm sure that you know they'll have some questions as they go along. Um, I did have a phone call from Owen straight after to say, right, so if these recommendations, who's doing what? So that sort of take on it of, right, we're doing them then is you know that that was a great thing that he seems happy with what we were recommending it's now just a case of doing them <laughs> getting it done and I suppose for Sport Wales it's prioritizing you know how do we get the best out of all of this we don't want to rush certain things just to get it done you know we need to make sure that we prioritize the right areas and things so no I'd say that it was a overwhelmingly positive um, response to the projects. Any other questions? Conscious that we went over by four minutes, but we always have time for questions. There's no more questions in the chat. No. Um, I'll give a second more while I talk and move on to the next slide. Just to say then again, thank you very much for one joining us today, going through our giving up your time over the last hour. And some of you, um, you know, you've been through the journey and joining us in various show and tell. So uh, we hope that generally that has been valuable for you and your knowledge as well. Um, as this is kind of the end, um, so if you have any questions, uh, do get in touch with Becca. She will be the best person to kind of uh, talk to, to get any more information or to um, kind of, if you have ideas or want to raise or want to get involved, um, I would say Becca is your port of call. Um, if there is no more questions, then um, thank you very much again. And um, thank you for all, all the team. Uh, before I forget, I think we all are very pleased to have been part uh, of this journey in various um, kind of uh, entry points. Uh, and I think we all wish you, uh, Spot Wales, all the best and uh, onwards and upwards, as they say. And a quick shout out to uh, the Discovery and Alpha OGs of Steph and Owen B as well that you know you got us to this point as well with the work that you did in those previous phases so thank you superb right thank you very much uh the recording will be available and uh becca will share in the future next week or so thank you very much
and see you some point in the future. Best of luck. Bye.